Hey guys, Rebecca here from homeschoolon.com. There's such a balance, you guys, between encouraging each other and between encouraging each other. And what I mean by that, I know that sounds super weird, but what I mean by that is that we can encourage each other in, in two different ways. One of the more common ways, I think, that we encourage one another is being each other's yes man. And that's a great thing. I love being people's yes man. It's, it's, I make them feel, in my opinion, you're making somebody feel less bad about themselves and where they're at and to feel encouraged that they're not alone and to feel like they aren't failing as much as they think they are and all those different things. And that's important because a lot of times our expectations, and I talk about that a lot, but a lot of times our expectations are what are actually making us feel like we're such failures. And so we need to just check our expectations and realize, wait a minute, the rest of the world is struggling with this too. Maybe I, I shouldn't have an expectation this high because I can't, I can't attain that. So it's important to encourage one another with just that authentic being real with one another, taking off the mask, you know, letting them see our messy houses, letting them see our imperfect days, and being able to say it's okay, give someone a hug where they're at and be like, all right, you know what? I fail too. We all fail. And then there's encouragement where you can sometimes get stuck in this. And I talked about, I touched on this a little bit in last week's video where you can kind of get stuck sometimes in this rut of, well, I'm doing the best I can and, or, you know, everyone else is doing it. And you take it as an excuse. You use it as an excuse to kind of give up or try less or whatever. And I think a lot of times, a lot of us are stuck in this place. We're stuck in this place of, acceptance and of thinking that well you know everyone else is kind of in the same boat and I don't want to have expectation on myself because I don't want to be disappointed or I don't want to have stress or pressure on my day so I'll just have no expectation and whatever we're just doing the best we can and we're just surviving but it doesn't have to be that way your homeschool does not have to just be survival your house doesn't have to just be survival. You don't have to just accept that while you can't have the expectation of perfection, that for the next 12 years of your life, you're just gonna live a life less than what you wanted. You don't have to accept that. Maybe you need to find a different way. Maybe you need to tweak your expectations, but you don't have to be way down here thinking that you're just gonna survive until they're gone. Do you want that? Do I want that? No, I want more. I want more for my homeschool experience. I want more for my kids. And frankly, I want more for myself. I want to go through my homeschool experience and my journey feeling like I did the best I could. I don't want to have regrets. I want to go through my homeschool journey knowing that I had fun and I enjoyed it. I don't want to homeschool and hate it. I don't want to homeschool and, and, feel like I'm just surviving. That is less than what I want for my life. It's less than what I want for my kid's life. And so today, I want to do that kind of encouragement. Today, I want to say to myself included and to any other homeschool mom that might be stuck in a little bit of a rut of survival, just getting through it, maybe not seeing the, the value or maybe just needing motivation or inspiration of why they're doing this, I want to talk to you and I want to say that there is more. There is more. You can have a successful homeschool day. You can have a home that is maybe not perfect, but maybe it's not embarrassing to bring people over to and isn't causing you to want to scream every time you step on that sticky floor for the 800th time. You can find balance. There is balance. It does exist. Now, are you going to live perfectly balanced all of your days? Absolutely not. You're going to be balanced and then you're going to swing and you're going to come back to center and you're going to swing and you're going to constantly be recentering yourself, but you can aim for and you can achieve balance. It is possible. So what I want you guys to do is to sit down and figure out what are my expectations? 
what do I want? Because those are not all bad. Not all expectations are bad. Your expectations are, are also your hopes and your values and your dreams for your children and for yourself. And you need to identify which ones are positive and uplifting and realistic and, and priorities and which ones are the busy, the busy work that just fills in all the cracks and makes all expectations unattainable. So identify which expectations are really your goals and your visions and your values and which ones are less important, not the priority, and maybe causing a, a, causing a, a mountain that doesn't need to be there and cut those ones. Just scratch them right off your list. Write down everything that you want for your homeschool day, for your children, and for yourself. And include everything. Include what you want for your home. I want an organized home. Heck yeah, I want an organized home. I'm sick and tired of the, the idea that I can't have anyone over. I'm sick and tired of being tired. <laughs> I'm too tired to invite people to my house because when I think of inviting to someone to my house, I'm thinking of all the cleaning and organizing I'm going to have to do. My goodness, you guys, if my house was clean and organized and I was on top of things, I would have a much happier life because A, it brings me anxiety and stress when my house is a mess, but B, I would feel free to say to my friends, hey, why don't we get together and do this subject together? Sure, that's not a stress. That's no extra anything for me because my house is in a constant state of something that I can accept and live with and could invite someone over for. So I want that. That is, that's not just an expectation, it's not an expectation right now. I don't expect that of myself right now because it just doesn't happen. Right now I'm surviving and that's just being totally brutally honest. Right now, and a big part of that is this, it's my blog, it's, it's a lot of work right now. And so I'm surviving in every other aspect of my life. I'm just, just keeping my head above water. I don't want that. I don't want that for myself. So if I could invite someone over and it was no extra stress and I didn't have to think about all the things I had to do with work, all the things I had to do with school, all the things that I had to do with my house, then I could be flexible and I would enjoy my life a lot more and we could have a lot more fun together as a family. But right now I feel tied, I feel weight, and I feel pressure with everything we want to do. My husband wants to go out and do a family activity, that's pressure and weight to me because that means that I have to try to get our school in faster. I am behind on this. I've got that project. My house is a mess and that extra thing just feels too much. So. All this to say, write out a list of everything. Write out a list of, I want an organized home. I want to have more structure in my day. I want to be on my phone less. You guys, phones are the killer of your homeschool day. They are the killer of your homeschool day. I don't care if you work from home. Work from home is the worst because you never break from it. You always have access to it. It's always calling you and pulling you. And the more you're on your phone, the more it becomes an addiction. And if you're sitting there thinking, I'm not addicted to my phone, I want you to think about how much time you're actually spending scrolling through watching videos. Today alone, I sat for a good hour in the stream of sunlight in my kitchen. It felt so wonderful. I'm cold. And so I told myself, I'm going to sit in the sun and just get some vitamin D and of course, what else are you going to do but sit on your phone? Well, I could have been reading on my phone. I could have at least done Kindle or something on my phone. Instead, I scrolled and I scrolled and I scrolled and I scrolled and I watched stupid videos and I wasted time. I wasted time. Not only did I waste time, but when my kids come in and out and in and out, they are talking to me with my head down. And I look up and I answer and then my head's back down. Or worse, I don't even look up because I'm still have my face on my phone and I just answer as I scroll. That is not what I want for my kids. That is not what I want for myself. You want to have the kind of connection with your kids that's going to last. You want to have relationships with your kids that's going to last them into their adulthood. You want to show and model your kids things like a love of reading. You want to have that family connection where it's going to hold your kids so that they're not going to get into drugs and all these other things because they just know it would break your heart and they love you too much, you have to have that connection. And that connection does not come from this. That connection comes from looking up, from giving them a hug, from pulling them in, from pulling away from all your stress and anxiety and focusing on your child. Eye contact 
recognizing where they're at. You guys, as a culture, we have shifted so far, so far from the values of what we want. We don't even know what we want and we don't even know how to get there anymore. And if you don't think that plays into homeschooling, you are dead wrong because that's everything to do with our homeschools. It has everything to do because we are creating the entire atmosphere that's going to impact our kids for their entire lives. No pressure. <laughs> it is paramount. It is so important that your goals and your values are constantly in your mind, that you are constantly checking and balancing everything in your day with that. Do I want to have the kind of home that my kids aren't embarrassed to invite their friends over? Then, then, then cleanliness is actually more than just your own sanity. It's creating the kind of atmosphere that, that makes your kids feel cozy and warm and safe and, and they want to be in. Have you ever noticed that when you go and you clean your house and you're vacuuming a room, all of a sudden your kids start playing in it and they're rolling around and doing somersaults and it's exciting because the room is clean. Have you ever noticed that when you clean up their toys and put them all in their proper bins, all of a sudden they want to play in there again? Because it was so messy that they didn't even have the mental space to figure out what they wanted to play with before. That's what I want for my kids. I want an atmosphere, an environment that they're gonna look back on and remember not as a hot mess. I want an atmosphere, an environment that is pleasing, that is comforting, that is nice. I like clean, my kids like clean. They like it. So if we could work together on instilling those values, that impacts my homeschool, that impacts the entire atmosphere of my homeschool. And that for me is a priority, and that for me is a value. More than a value of what my kids learn is an, an, a value of them loving learning and seeing learning as a way of life. And so to do that, I have to model it and I have to do it and I have to make it not about this check off the boxes, stress and anxiety. I need to make it a, let's sit together, let's do our morning basket, let's cuddle, let's read, let's have family reading time, let's play board games, let's do things together where you're seeing it played out that learning is something we all enjoy. If you're hating it, then they're gonna be hating it because that comes across. So all this to say, Today I want you to make a list. I want you to make a list of everything that you possibly want in your perfect homeschool day, your perfect vision of your family, your perfect vision of your kids' spiritual lives, your perfect vision of your home and your organization. Lay it all out. What is perfection for all of those things? And then go out and, and just scratch out 90% of it because you can't aim for perfection because you will fail. You will fail in your own who you want to be. You will fail in your home. You will fail with your kids. You will fail with school. You will expect, put that on there. I expect failure. Expect failure and even welcome failure because every time your kids melt down, that's an opportunity for connection. Every time your kids are struggling with something, that's an opportunity for them to learn. Every time you fail, that's an opportunity for you to find what will work. So expect failure, welcome failure and scratch half those things off your list. Figure out what is my top three priorities of my life, of what I want to see in my home, of what I want to create in this atmosphere. And then don't just give up and feel like, well, if you can't do it all, then you can't do anything. Guys, that is such a lie. That is such a lie. And we even joke about it. We joke about it like, oh yes, us perfectionists, if we can't do it all, then we'll just give up. Ha ha ha. It's not funny anymore. To me, it's not funny anymore because I feel like we've accepted that as an excuse. We've accepted that as reality that we should just not have any expectations because, well, we can't do it all. Well, that's great. Right? I mean, when you sit and think about it, that's terrible. That's a terrible way to live our lives. No one wants to live their lives like that. Have expectation of yourself. Have expectations of your kids. They can do more than you probably could even imagine that they could do, but they feel your lack of expectation. And everybody in your home gets this atmosphere and this attitude of blah, what's the point? We're just surviving. If you are sitting there right now and this is resonating with you and you're thinking, no, I don't want that then you have to take steps to make it different. You make it. You, not your husband, who's not there because he's working, not your kids. You can't have that expectation of them. You have to make a change. 
You have to lay out goals and you have to make steps every day to get to those goals and make them small and make them realistic and make them ones you can achieve. Don't go like me and all other perfectionists out there and buy 50 books and never even read them and never be able to implement everything and, and say, I'm going to do it all and then burn out. Don't do that. Make realistic expectations and baby steps to get there. Don't do it all at once. It will happen. It will, but it's not going to happen from you sitting there just accepting your life as it is. That's my call to you. That is my encouragement to you. That is my, my rise up homeschool moms. Rise up and take what you want in your homeschool. Take what you want for your family and take what you want for your home because no one is going to give it to you. And one day you do not want to look back on your life and think, what did I do? You don't want that. And I don't want that for you. So that's my challenge. I hope you guys have an amazing, amazing homeschool week. If you're watching this on a Monday, tomorrow's Monday when I'm posting this video, don't accept Mondays suck. Mondays don't suck. It's not going to suck. Claim it over your day. Today is going to be awesome because you're going to make it awesome. Homeschool on.